So how many people here worry? Raise your hand. If you worry, raise your hand. Oh, come on, I can't believe the hands that are down. I don't know anybody who doesn't worry. Put those hands up. Okay, now ask yourself why. Why are you so terrified? That's what Jesus said this morning. Why are you so terrified? Ask yourself, what good has ever come from worry? Can you think of something positive that came from worrying? Did it change anything? No, it doesn't change anything. And yet, we probably spend a good portion of our day consumed with worry. Now, for some of us, it's even harder because I have obsessive compulsive disorder, which makes me worry even more so than the average person. But I can't think of a single good thing that's ever come from any of the worry that I've wasted my time on. Do, how many people were here in 2016? Raise your hands. Okay. Do you remember when I had my first endoscopy and I talked about that? Anybody remember that? Okay. So I had my very first endoscopy, you know, that's where they take that tube and they stick it down your throat and they, they see inside of your esophagus and your stomach to see if everything's okay. And so I come to, after it's over, and the surgeon says to me, everything looks pretty good, but I had to take four biopsies because you had red spots in your esophagus. And at that time I didn't even, I mean, I'd heard the word biopsy, but I didn't know the definition. So I get home and I look it up and I go, oh my God. Bi biopsy, there, could there be a worse word that, except maybe autopsy? Because <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my God, they're looking for cancer. And I had known someone the year before who died of esophageal cancer and it was horrible. So I took two weeks to get the results back. What do you think I did those two weeks? Do you think I put all my trust in God and was just totally worry free? No, I was terrified. I worried and worried and worried till I got that back, that test result back. But now I ask myself, what good did that do? Did it change anything? 24 hours a day worry, does that change anything? 30 minutes of worry, does that change anything? No, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. In fact, it makes everything worse. Because if there even is a problem, it's making that problem worse. If there is no problem, then it was totally for nothing. And you could have been calm and peaceful and in a good mood instead of being all wound up and on the verge of a panic attack. Obviously, everybody here has survived whatever they have worried about. If you hadn't survived it, you'd be in a body bag right now, right? Somewhere. Or you'd be buried in the ground. You somehow survived it. Whether the, what you were worried about was real or whether it was just made up in your head you somehow survived it. And you will continue to survive it, and you will survive it even better if you just simply give it to God and say, God, this is beyond my control. I don't want to have to worry about this. I want to fully trust in you. And so I will do my best not to worry. I will do my best to do things to get myself out of that space where I need to worry. And then I'm going to leave the rest of it to you and ask you to do for me what I cannot do for myself. One of the things I learned during that two week period when I was uh, having all that panic over the uh, biopsies was, well, one thing I learned that Xanax works really good. <laughs> Taking away a lot of the worry, at least the Xanax, I only took it at night, but at least I was able to go to sleep. The other thing that I learned was that um, if I got out of the house, I got out of my head. As long as I was sitting in the house, I was stuck up here in my head, thinking about all the possible horrible things that could come of this and worrying my head off. If I left the house and just went walking, as soon as I got outside, suddenly I'm observing everything around me, the buildings, the trees, the mountains, the people walking past, and suddenly now my, I'm out of my head and I'm into the reality of the moment. And then my worry and my panic started to go down because I was no longer stuck in my head. So that's one of the ways God led me to help to release the worry that I had. And if you call on God, God will, God will find ways for you to release the worry as well. But you have to be willing to call on God and to ask for that help. And sometimes we never really ask for the help. 
You know, we might, we might be saying a bunch of our fathers and Hail Marys, but we're really not calling down on God with the words exactly, I need help. This is my cry for help, God. Please, please get me through this. We have to be willing to ask God for what we exactly need. He knows already, but he wants to hear it from us. So next time that you have something that you think you need to worry about, do what you can to help yourself. If it means doing something like going for a walk, or if it means doing something like taking a nice pill that helps to some degree. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, God gave us medicine, right? He gave us medicine for a reason. So take advantage of the things that God has given you to help you to make it through life. And then try to practice. I mean, you think about this reading. If you were in a boat like the apostles, wouldn't you have been terrified too? Anybody here not be terrified? Raise your hand. Okay. So, I mean, they were there with him. They walked with him. They talked with him. They could touch him. And yet they were still terrified. So it makes sense that when we're facing a bad situation, we could be terrified ourselves too. But if you think about how he helped the apostles, if you think about how he helped everybody, he's willing to help you too. And that's an important point, is that you have to be willing to believe God wants to help you. If you're not willing to believe that God really loves you and God really wants to help you, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to have a very hard time accepting that God is on your side. So start there. Start with, I believe God wants to help me. I believe God loves me. I believe God is on my side. And God understands what I'm going through. And I'm going to fully explain to him exactly how I feel and exactly what I need. And then I'm going to do my best to get out and do things to help myself get out of my head, get out of the worry. And then I'm going to leave the rest to God who will lead me through and take the worry away as long as I'm willing to help myself. If I'm just going to sit there helpless and ask God to do it all for me, nothing's going to happen. I have to be willing to help myself first. And once I'm willing to do that, then God will do everything he can to help us and to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So that's fully putting your, tr fully putting your trust into God, surrendering everything and knowing that God has got your back, God is on your side, even if things don't turn out the way you want. God is still going to be there to help you through the difficulty until you get to the other side. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, how is the microphone today? Amen. Okay, well, good. Well, you know, people always say to me, Father, I couldn't hear what you had to say. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but I'm kind of a soft-spoken person. And I, when I get up here, I'm focused on the words coming out of my mouth. I mean, when I get up here, a lot of times I don't know what I'm going to say. I just get up here and I say, okay, Holy Spirit, let's, let's do it. Okay, let's give the homily. And so I have to pay attention to what's going on, what's coming to me. I can't be paying attention necessarily to whether or not uh, I'm being heard by everybody. But uh, if you can't hear me, um, then I know, normally then move closer. The closer you come, I mean, if you sit right up here, you're going to hear me. Now look, look at how empty this is. If you know, you could sit right here, you'd be able to hear me just fine, right? I'm not going to bite you. Okay, and I promise, I know, I, know, I, know, I know you know I like to come up and pick on people sometimes and ask them questions, but I promise you, if you sit in this front row, I will not pick on you. Okay? And actually, when you sit in this front row, you get 50,000 years, <coughs> 50, years out of purgatory. Okay? So this is the place to be, whether you can hear or whether you can't hear. Amen? Amen.